Okay, welcome back. We're continuing with describing, you know, electrical properties. And today, we're going to be describing a capacitor. So what is a capacitor? And this is um, something which is very uh, fundamental to understanding piezoelectric materials because essentially they are capacitors in line with their piezoelectric capabilities. So to understand a capacitor, we can think about two metal plates, which are you know, a distance h apart. And inside this area, let's say we put another material, say it's rubber, but it doesn't matter, and a certain material, and it has a certain property, uh, epsilon, uh, which I won't go into right now, but I'll find out all that soon enough. So a certain material in there called epsilon, and it's like rubber, or it's like a ceramic, it doesn't allow electrons to flow, it's not metal, so electrons cannot flow through it they actually end up stopping because it's a, it's not a conductor, it's a capacitor, it's a dielectric. So, if we then, you know, have our battery, that I mentioned earlier, if we hook up this, and we, and we, we apply a voltage difference across these leads, these are metal leads, and this is like a metal, metal plate right here, So we attach, and then we apply voltage difference of 5 volts. So 5 volts here, 0 volts here. Or it would be the exact same thing if we, if we did 6 volts and 1 volt. But for simplicity's sake, we do 5 volts one and 0 volts. And we know that we develop an electric field, E, equal to the voltage divided by the distance which is 5 volts divided by h and it's called this 1 meter just to make it easy on us call 1 meter so we know that we have an electric field of 5 volts per meter so we go 1 meter over we're going to get 5 volts the voltage is going to drop 5 volts so in this case what exactly happens in this capacitor let's take a little bit of a finer look Let's say, uh, so we understand that this becomes, this is actually a positive plate, and this is a negative plate. And these, and thus, these create an electric field across the material, from the positive to the negative side. When this happens, the charges inside the material, the positive charges, they want to go to the negative. The positive charges want to go to the negative. There are positive charges and negative charges inside any material. But, you know, in this rubber, you know, there's positive charges and negative charges. They balance it. They, ba they balance out. Uh, but when you apply an electric field, they are kind of skewed. Therefore, what we end up getting is that these, let's, let's call this the you know, 5 volt and this is 0 volt. And so the positive charges get displaced this way and the negative charges get displaced that way. Therefore we have an imbalance of charge. Because of this imbalance of charge, with the negatives getting closer to here and positive getting closer to here, there are negative charges, there are positive charges supplied on this plate to balance this shift. And there are negative charges supplied by the power source, which is the battery, or whatever power supply you have to balance this from the outside. Therefore, we have actually charge buildup on these parallel plate on this capacitor, which is called a parallel plate capacitor because you basically, you know, have put two plates together and you sandwich some material inside of it. You see that up? You attach leads to it. And that's a parallel plate capacitor. But so so like I said, we have these negative negative charges on one side, positive charges on the other side that develop now because these charges inside are moving. So if we cut 
the power. Now this is 5 volts, 0 volts. But if you cut it, let's say we chop this line over here. If you cut it, or we just simply reduce, you know, the voltage and we, we cut the power source. So now no charges can flow. So we just basically cut this. So no charges can flow. Uh, thereby, this charge is state. So we had this plate, and we had positive charges, positive charges, positive charges, positive charges, negative charges at the surface. So we have another plate on the bottom of the plate, positive, 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 positive. We have negative charges. Therefore, we're actually storing energy. Because if we connect a wire now from the top side to the bottom side, remember on uh, this diagram, this is the top, you know, this is this plate, this is the other one. If you combine it, these positive charges will go to the negative side. And then thereby, if you attach like a light bulb, huh? There's a nice light bulb here. Your light bulb is gonna is gonna is gonna glow because charges are flowing. So basically, you can have a stored energy on this type of uh, configuration, and the energy stored is equal to one half the capacitance times the voltage squared. So you, this is the expression which governs the uh, energy. So now I'll explain the capacitance is the ability to store energy of that material, of that specific device. And the voltage uh, is the applied uh, voltage for, um, is the applied voltage that you put on the material. So going into this you know, expression further, the capacitance or the ability of a material to store charge for a given voltage. You know, the relation between voltage and charge again is Q, which is charge, we're gonna call charge Q, equals C V squared. Or sorry, C Q equals C V. So if we increase the capacitance, uh, we are basically increasing the amount of charge displacement which can occur for a given voltage on a material. So we learn that the charge then, it's the same expression we had before, Q equals CV. Remember that last expression, where this equals, the voltage equals the uh, electric field times the height, or times the displacement, the distance between the two uh, parallel plates. So we have uh, this, energy equals Q equals, equals QV, and Q equals CV. So we have CV and then V. So Q equals V squared. And this half comes in because of the charging cycle. The, the charge which we, which we uh, uh, implement on the material, the way we, the way we uh, uh, charge up. Because it has a cycle, right? Um, this is like this. So we have the charge in the electric field. You know, as we attach, you know, this to five volts, from zero volts, we're you know we're gradually increasing it to five volts from zero volts. Therefore, we follow this path, and the area under the curve is going to be the energy, and this is where that one half kind of comes from.